It's the 27th of November, 2021, and you're listening to The Future of Photography. The Future of Photography. Hello, and we're back. I'm Chris, Adrian, and if, Hi. You're, if you're watching this, no one else is here. It's just the two of us. What happened? Ah, everyone's busy. I think. I think they were. Well, I think Je Jeremiah is working, isn't he? Uh, he's so working night shifts right now. <laughs> he's doing night shifts. I feel a bit sorry for him there in that supermarket working night shifts. You know, I don't, I'm not. I don't think he's stacking shelves. I don't think that's what he's doing. I think he's doing slightly different things that so. sometime in the future we might see the results of. Um, yeah, it'd be good to see it. Yeah. Yeah. And. Well, here we are. So, uh, yes, here, here we are, just the two of us. And it's, good, it's an interesting one today because uh, I think something that we said a couple of weeks back no. in, uh, in uh, episode number 203 uh, I'm, caused, I'm caused a little bit of concern. <laughs> yeah, well, may, as well you might protect yourself. So some of our, uh, some of members of our, our Discord, um, good friends of the show that they are, and it's always good to have the conversations in Discord with everybody. Oh, yes. it's, a, it's a fun place for a, a slightly longer form, you know, more voices conversation. Uh, they challenged us a little bit on on our conversation about innovation uh, a couple of weeks ago. I was, I was and, being quite bold. I was being quite bold saying... The, uh, the Apple and DJ, DJI are the only innovators right now. That was pretty much my my position, my exaggerated position. Yes, it was an exaggerated position, and 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 you know, on purpose, of course, a little bit tongue in cheek there. But the it's yeah, it is. Uh, we did we did somewhat state uh, perhaps that, that a lot of the innovation coming uh, in the camera world was from uh, a phone manufacturer and a drone manufacturer. Um, uh, I'm, I was trying to think what like the merger of those two companies might look like the other day, and and what I would look for in a drone phone, or would it be a phone drone? I don't know, but I don't know that the two products go together very well. Apart from, of course, one is used to navigate and fly the other you one. Know, yeah, there is they that. share they share a lot of technology. The drones wouldn't be flying if the phones hadn't started with the gyroscopes, the miniaturized ones, that kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. the the one the one is is a kind of a logical conclusion of the other, and. Uh, and if we look at, at modern cars, the, oft, often many of them are like phones on wheels now, you know. Well, certainly, yes, certainly computers on wheels. Um, uh, it's uh, yeah, it's uh, it's uh, the bit big screens and things like that, which is um, which is, is an interesting thing. Anyway, before we get even further down the rabbit hole and into more trouble by talking more about phones and more about drones, I think we better 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 correct that <laughs> position. So this week we're going to talk about innovation that doesn't come from either Apple or DJI. And you don't, uh, uh, you yeah. don't say there is innovation outside of Apple and DJI. Uh, apparently, according to the members of our Discord, there is, and so uh, yeah, we thought we'd we'd better better acknowledge that. And uh, you know, the, actually, to, to be fair to them, you know, the 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 things that they picked us up on. Actually, it was a good discussion. I was. It I, was a good it, discussion. I I was initially like, okay, wait, 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 step back. I, I was I was I was only trying to to be a bit provocative there, uh, but it turned into a really good discussion, and we we got to a point where I think we all agreed that yeah, there is a lot of innovation there, but also at the same time, there's so much else going on, of course. Yeah, is. and and because there's more, because there's so much more to making an image than there than the image yeah, the technical computational pipeline of, of processing light into electricity and then into pictures and i think you know once once you start to say once you start to say yes okay let's look at all those other things you know and we'll come we'll, we'll come to what they are in a minute uh, actually of course there's a there's a whole world of stuff going on which is which is really interesting so we're here today to correct that and we've got and, uh, a, you know you know even 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 uh looking at it from the angle of the the innovators that the ones that i call innovators are forcing the others to innovate you know there is there is the, the others won't won't take that hit and just lie down and don't do anything they are everyone is ramping up everyone is kind of uh, everyone knows that they need to deliver so uh, everyone does pretty much yes absolutely absolutely okay right so let's jump in and talk about some stuff that is not 
related to phones or drones then i'm going to start off with a company and i don't know actually whether people will think that this particular company is known for its innovation or whether it will be perceived as being relatively conservative in its product engineering um i i'm talking about uh an, a, an emotional well the, the name the name just makes emotions run high with some people i'm talking about Leica, like and uh, emotions Leica in, as in both camera, directions actually. right there's yeah the, the one the one camp that goes Leica, who i always wanted one and the other goes like why would i need that i have an <laughs> xyz so yeah. So I've picked I've picked on Leica, right? I've picked on Leica deliberately here, right? Because they are they are a company that are famous for a certain way of uh, of handling a camera and and a certain bias towards making that simple, even almost a, a pure experience if if that term even means anything. And uh you know, I think you know you, Quite rightly, uh, our Discord members picked us up on things like ergonomics of a phone being not great, uh, and Leica, uh, yeah, Leica are well known for focusing on those kinds of things. So I've picked up here uh, the Leica CL, which is their uh, their I don't know. It's it's a digital camera. It's an, it it's it takes a lot of its design cues from the original Barnack Leicas, uh, yeah, predating the the M series of cameras. Um, but it's it's a, a camera with an electronic viewfinder, interchangeable lenses. It happens to have an APS-C sensor, but it really is a, a camera that tries to to preserve, but then also build on the, that older Leica way of working and the older uh, and the the you know focusing on the simplicity and the ergonomics and things like that, and and not too much gadgetry, not too many gizmos and buttons and things like that. So, so I I just wanted to pull this up. You know, is 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 this going to be perhaps the the ultimate joy of handling right for for a, a Leica camera? I don't know. I I, well, I don't think I I've ever shot with a Leica camera, but there you go. I know people who are firmly planted in the Leica camp, and uh, the photos I get to see from them are marvelous or beautiful and that is not necessarily just down to the tech that they have in their hands but of course it has to do with things like ergonomics it has to do with things like um, uh, ease of use and uh, maybe even distilling it down to to the essence and that's i think one of the things that leica does if you look at their design uh it's very reduced minimalistic design and uh, the photography with the Leica goes that same way. And then that combined with uh, pretty good craftsmanship, um, I think. And this one, the CL, as a, as a bundle with a lens for only £3,000, that's a bargain. <laughs> that's a bargain when it comes to well, Leicas. And that, that, that's, your, that's your wide angle pancake lens as well. Yes. If you want actually just a normal lens, it's, it's, it's north of £5,000. So there is, yeah. a, there is a, a price premium here. But the, you know, I, I tell you what, I, you know, I, I sit in the camp of, I think Leica have been really quite innovative over the last 10 years or they, so. I mean, yes, they digitized to. the M series, but they've, they, they've yeah, had they... to because digitization was one of their biggest threats um, at a time when Leica was still this old fashioned German conservative fine mechanics company, which they still are in some ways. But I, I just, I remember the, the early days of Leica digitizing. I held a workshop and, uh, one of the participants was one of the Leica's HR guys. And he, we talked about Leica's, oh, right. uh, Leica's path forward. And he he frankly told me that, yeah, Leica's... And that, that's, that's years ago. I, again, that's not recent. But he frankly told me they are, they're awesome when it comes to fine mechanics, when it, the glass is second to none. But um, they can't do digital and they had to learn this, <laughs> so they had to reinvent themselves. And I think they've done a really good job doing that. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I think I think you're right. I mean, they they now have a, a wider range of products than perhaps they they would have had ten years ago. You know, they now yeah. have the sort of big, you know, the the big medium format studio cameras. Are they called S SLs or something like that? They've yep. got little ones. They've got digital versions of the M series. They 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 they, they quite for, what for Leica was a, a real step out. 
uh, with the TL series, which is just one of the, the cast aluminium ones that were very futuristic looking, um, which I think they still sell, but maybe didn't take off in the way they thought they might. But so anyway, that, I just want to acknowledge that in the field of, you know, sort of uh, purity of ergonomics and, and purity of expression of a camera for Leica. Um, so there we go. There's one. Move it, moving on, another camera manufacturer that probably well, this is this is a really interesting company because they have fingers in a lot of pies. Um, yeah, there, there's a lot going on. Whether or not you could call it a coherent approach to the photography market, I don't know. <laughs> um, seems a bit bits and pieces at times to me. But right now, uh, again, new camera come out. OK, so this is the Ricoh GR3X. Uh -huh. Okay, so this is the new version of the DR3 uh, that uh, is is very very similar to the one that, that has been out for for some years, uh, but this one has a forty millimeter equivalent lens. Uh, so that's that's the innovation here. Is so what we've got here though. Uh, let's be clear: is it's a it's a genuinely pocketable, yeah, as in jeans pocket camera. Uh, it has a 40 millimeter equivalent lens, uh, although it has a large sensor for a camera that size. It is an APS-C sensor. But some of the things that I think that they bring out in the Ricoh, especially in the GRs, um, is, is some stuff that's really just really useful for photographers. Actually, you're really into like helping you get the image you want. Um, as opposed to it being almost a, a, a feature that you need to set. A couple of examples here, highlight weighted metering mode. So this is where you set it to an automatic exposure and it makes sure that it doesn't blow out your highlights. Um, That's the thing that I constantly look for when I take pictures with my camera. I, I want to preserve highlights wherever possible, unless it's specular reflections in Chrome or something like that. Uh, yeah, and yeah. so you know that, to have that as a as a as a mode. It's, it just when you read about that for the when I read about that for the first time a few years ago, I, was like, I would like. Why that. didn't yes. I think of that? That's so obvious. Why doesn't everybody do that? I don't. I don't know why. And even now, some years later, Rico. I, I I'm not sure that I could name you another camera brand that does highlight weighted metering. Um, so yeah, uh, there there may be one that I'm just not aware of, but I, I think that it is. It seems to me to be a a, a Rico thing. Maybe I don't know. Maybe they've and they've it's a highly highly photographer focused thing as well. It's, it's yeah, yeah. It is for all those years we spent. We all spent watching or making YouTube yeah, videos about yeah exposing to the right and getting your histogram right and things like that. It's like well, Rico just do it automatically. Um. The other thing which is really good uh, is the snap focus. So you can set it to snap focus to uh, a certain uh, distance. So you can just press the button, uh, press the shutter button and take a photo very quickly because it doesn't need to go through auto focusing. Um, I I had the, the Fuji equivalent of, of this Ricoh GR3 for a while. I don't have it anymore, which is the XF10, which also had snap focus on it. Uh, and it was really useful. Uh, really useful very especially if you are you know needing to react very quickly you know uh, and especially i mean these things are aimed at street photographers but they they're not just useful for street photography but um yeah it was very useful and another thing with the rico even though it's a tiny camera it has a built-in nd filter so you know you can take three stops off the exposure and use your lens wider open for a, sh a shallower depth of field and yeah you know, or you can go out on very bright days and just not have to use you know f16 all the time and stuff like that which you know i think all these are good things and are really really focused on helping people make better photographs um, so i like those features i don't know about you chris Oh, uh, ND filter. Built-in ND is, is is so helpful. I wish every camera had that, especially if you do the odd, odd video shoot where you mm. will also, where it will also allow you to get to the proper shutter speeds for the proper frame rate uh, much easier than any other way in bright light. Um, that's a huge helper. And having to put filters on all the time, yeah, it's no fun. No, no, it is. It, it, I mean, I think uh, I had the original Fuji X100, which is a long time ago now, of course. Um, and that had a built in ND filter, if I remember correctly. In fact, I think it had a three stop ND filter you could you could uh, put in 
in front of it. Um, mm-hmm. Anyway, um, so there you go, Rico. Right. Uh, on to a couple of things that we've discussed then. Uh, we are going to come on to a big thing that Chris has got to talk about in a minute, but just to <laughs> quick, quickly through. We're not there yet. Not there yet. We're not there yet. Quickly through another couple of things. I uh, just want to shout out again to the uh, the Nikon Z9 or Z9 that we spoke about. Um, the yeah, flagship. The flagship camera that has no mechanical shutter. Yes. Um, and yeah, you know that's yeah clear, clearly that that's an innovation. Um, uh, yeah, so so yeah, well, it's an innovation as in they still can get relatively short shutter speeds with it, which was not yes really possible before in in that same way. Or Absolutely, yes. So there's that one. Uh, yes. Then another one we talked about really recently is the Canon dual fisheye lens, um, oh, which yes. is a new le- new lens from Canon, um, uh, which just reminds me of Johnny Five. You know, like the what was that? <laughs> well, the I don't think Johnny Five was a was a VR production tool, was it? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> I think it was like a weapon or something, but I can't, I can't remember. I can't remember. <laughs> the movie was too long ago. Anyway, um, yeah, the Canon dual fisheye lens, you know, clearly, you know, the Canon, you know, producing a lens that is that is aimed at supporting the production of virtual reality uh, type um, uh, uh, content, I should say. Excuse me, I'm yes. tripping over my words there. Um, and so there's the innovation there. Uh, and last but not least for me as well, um, something we've spoken about recently in the analog photo world. This is the Pinster camera. So those of you who listened to my report back from the photography show in Birmingham a couple of months ago, um, uh, we met uh, a chap called Ollie who is, uh, at the time was running a Kickstarter, or just about to launch a Kickstarter, which happily was successfully funded. Um, uh, to build a camera called the Pinster, which is a small black box that is a pinhole camera, a developer, and an enlarge- enlarger all in one. Um, <laughs> wild. And it, it is wild, isn't it? It is. It is crazy, and it's so fun to watch. We ha- uh, We actually um, since since I last t- spoke about this, actually, we had Ollie as a guest on Sunny Sixteen, um, which was um, w- which was great great to talk to him and uh you know lot, lots and uh, lots and lots of good things going on there so so there you go so there's there's my my quick run through uh, or maybe not so quick run through uh, a whole bunch uh, a list of stuff that is innovative that's got nothing to do with phones got nothing to do with drones um and hopefully that redresses <laughs> the balance a little bit at least bit. not on the surface at least not uh, on the surface uh, yeah. uh, no awesome that was that yes. was a great list. Wonderful. Uh, I found I, one that is also kind of innovation, I think, from a different field, but it certainly has to do with photography. Um, have you heard of the LSST? I haven't. The Legacy Survey of Space and Time. It's we're talking about the world's largest digital camera, and uh, it is going well. It is already sporting three point two gigapixels um petapixel had an interesting article about this so we'll link that in the show notes and this is well it's a it's the world it's a telescope of course and uh not just that but it is getting interesting sensor technology and so on um and it's it's being prepared uh to uh, to be installed in the chilean mountains at the um the rubin observatory which is um well, which is which is a, is a site for for telescopes. Um, if you're watching the video, here's a view of one of the lenses. So that is as as tall as a human that's being. Quite large, yes. Yes, that's it like is. The... <laughs> um, and uh, and uh, in some of the pictures, you can get a glimpse of the sensor array in there. I'm, I'm scrolling a bit. There is a video of it. So it is. It is. Uh, a pretty interesting thing, and it's being assembled in uh, Menlo Park right down in California, and it will then be carried over to the uh, Vera C. Rubin Observatory in northern Chile. So, and, sounds uh, awesome. And one of the... Sounds one, awesome. Sorry, go ahead. I was just saying, it sounds, sounds awesome. Uh, and what, what they want to do is they want to get like as much of the sky as quickly as possible and do that repeatedly, um, because... The, they just, you know, the problem is with telescopes is usually that you have, as a scientist, as a researcher, you have telescope time, and then you 
you, you book a slot and then you do your images. The telescope gets pointed at object X, Y, Z on out there. And then you take your, uh, your pictures and then these get evaluated. But what they want to do is they want to kind of repeat these things on a much wider scale and just look out there and see between those different pictures what has changed and how has it changed. And uh, that is not, that's not the usual thing. That it no well, uh, it's, it, I don't think I've I've seen a camera on the market just yet that has a three point two gigapixel sensor. I mean, I know the sensor ca- the, the pixel counts are going a bit nuts, but uh, I'm imagining this is a, a little bit larger than your typical sen- your typical camera sensor. Do you know? Do you happen to know how how big it is? Well, so so the the thing is, they they want to scan the entire visible sky over ten years, re- many 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 times. So it's a, it's a long term kind of thing. Um, I'm just quoting from the article, the camera's front end consists of three lenses and a filter that can be adjusted depending on the use case. Behind that is the camera's focal plane on which light from the telescope's mirror is cast. The focal plane is made up of 189 CCD charge couple devices. Okay. And wow. all are cooled in a vacuum to almost minus 150 degrees Fahrenheit, which is minus 100 Celsius. Each of these Gosh. devices can be seen as a digital camera in themselves as they capture mosaic images of the sky. And that will uh, pretty much enable a whole lot of interesting new things. Um, that, that they, they'll image half of the southern sky every three days, which That's- is... Brilliant. Yeah, to, to, with, with a 3.2 gigapixel so so that i mean this yes. is there's some big big numbers in there i mean 189 <laughs> sensors yes. okay so so uh, so so that that's quite large right even, even if they were fairly small sensors that would still be quite large um charge couple devices now that's an interesting choice isn't it so so often na- nowadays you know most of our cameras have cmos sensors in them and they're backlit cmos sensors and they have a whole string of other technical and marketing terms that go around them charge couple devices were in some sense the you know the original type of digital uh, they, camera weren't they they are also used by astronomers because um you can get really fairly even um noise rather noise free photos if you cool them well and they've been they've been often used in like webcams with ccds on telescopes and then they would shoot I don't know, a couple of thousand pictures of something out there and then stack them digitally in a certain way with tools and so on. Um, what this thing seems to be able to do is do this much, much faster, much, much better, much, much uh, more reliable and much, much more repeatable. So this will enable a few interesting things. Okay. Yeah. So I, I think, you know, I, I think we've done a little bit to balance our credibility there. That, that is, a, that is definitely <laughs> not yes. phone or drone technology. That is it, right? So just imagine putting that camera with one eighty nine sensors on a drone, and yes, well, that lens, that photo of a lens on their web page that looked no. to be to me about five feet or one and a half meters across. You put um, it in, so... on one hundred and eighty nine drones, and then make it a big virtual camera. Mathematically, ah. computationally, you know, <laughs> you could do, yeah, you could, you could do that, you could do that. I may, may. <laughs> there's probably a reason they didn't do that. <laughs> there's probably a reason they did it their way. It'll be science or something like that, <laughs> won't it? <laughs> it looks very impressive. Uh, I'd be interested to see it, it, as we're recording this. Actually, the the Hubble telescope, which is re- relatively old these days um has been having some troubles hasn't it and it but is is starting to come back to life i saw an article i think, saying they, I think the they, they revived one of the cameras didn't they something along those so. lines um but it's, it's interesting to see i think there's another there's another big one that's being james webb telescope is launched. going up soon yes yeah which, which um uh, and then to have something like this on the ground as well it's uh but, uh, I just you know, recently I, you know, I had I just recently listened to a podcast with uh, in a discussion with one of the with the, with the guy who is like the head of the James Webb Telescope and this is uh, oh really we'll, wow. we'll have to we'll have to do an episode on that one which is, is exciting yeah gosh really I've just exciting. googled when was Hubble launched and it says here April the twenty fourth nineteen ninety yes so Hubble's been up for over thirty years at this point I and it wasn't it supposed was to be long. to be going for that long by far not they have and and it and it didn't really see well in the beginning they had to give it like an additional. <laughs> 
pair pair of glasses pretty much to to make it see the see space uh, without a blur. So anyway, let's get on to the picks of the week. Adrian, what did you bring? Picks of the week. Uh, well, a little bit more down to earth than the space telescope. <laughs> Um, this is another uh, another one from the analog world, actually, <laughs> uh, a recent release uh, from Chroma Cameras. Uh, so for those of you who, who know Chroma Cameras, uh, a chap called Steve Lloyd up in Liverpool, near Liverpool, um, fantastic guy, makes some really, really good large format cameras primarily. Um, and uh, they are lightweight, easy to use uh, and, and designed to, to make it easy for people to take up lightweight, uh, large format photography. Chroma cameras have recently released their first 35 millimeter film camera. It <laughs> is a pinhole camera. It's a lovely, cute little thing. Um, it's kind of squarish because it shoots a square field of view, 24 mil by 24 mil on a 35 millimeter film. Uh, and I just thought I'd mention that as a, another I innovation. Um, this is one I haven't mentioned previously uh, because it wasn't launched uh, when we did the photography show roundup a few months ago. So, and the one go. reason this is work. this is innovative is because it is at least in large parts three D printed. Yes. So yes. It's, Sorry, it's I should have mentioned that. Innovation in I? manufacturing, yes. which is pretty cool. Well, there we go. Yeah. All right. Um, the pick of the week i brought has nothing to do with innovation rather the opposite it goes back in history um many of you might have heard of of so-called shirley cards which used to be cards color correction cards uh from kodak that had a woman on it called shirley that her name is shirley page and she <laughs> was the uh color correction model so to speak and you would in a studio you would take a picture of on, on the first shot of the film of the Shirley card and then in the lab they would have the same card and they would be able to color correct for everything but of course that that came with its problems because she uh, Shirley is a white girl and that left out a big por part of the population <laughs> and uh, that yep. actually ended up being a problem for uh, darker skin tones and how they were um, shown in film and it it's a long longish story um, and uh, there's an interesting podcast episode about this on 99% Invisible, again, one of my favorite podcasts. And, yeah, uh, it, and it goes on and talks about, uh, about Lena. Lena is um, the equivalent or sort of the counterpart in the, um, in the digital world because there is a, wasn't she Swedish? I think she was Swedish, a lady. Uh, her first name was Lena, who was used to calibrate the algorithms for the jpeg compression so those two women oh, are interesting. very uh, interesting they both have very interesting stories and those stories are also very interestingly connected in some way so that uh, episode of the podcast is if it's interesting um to hear because it's a really interesting and very important part of the history of photography so mm. Yeah, oh, I've got to listen to that one. I haven't listened to 99PI for ages, actually. Um, so I'm going to have to go and have a listen to that one. I just today listened to an episode of 99PI with uh, about dog breeds, about Frenchies and Labradoodles and different <laughs> interesting... Oh, well, you mean all the modern made-up dog breeds? <laughs> and, and the history of where dog breeds come from, because that wasn't, wasn't that obvious to me. Very interesting. 99% Invisible, my highest recommendation. So there cool. we go, innovation in photography and in dog breeding. How about that? Well, I, I, I'm just <laughs> glad that we had the op opportunity to, to set the record straight and to acknowledge innovation from elsewhere so that we don't end up uh, being unintentionally biased again. <laughs> anyway, let us know if we, are, if we are messing things up here. We will be back soon. Until then, everyone, take care and have a good one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. You've been listening to The Future of Photography. Subscribe to the show wherever you get your other podcasts. Find the show notes and more information at thefutureofphotography.com.